Welcome back to the channel. This video is part of the Plate Tectonics and Geology playlist. And today we're going to look at what is Connell Drift and what was Pangaea. This is the Earth Science Classroom. When investigating both Pangaea and Connell Drift, we have to introduce this certain scientist named Alfred Wegener. A German scientist born in 1880 and died in 1930. During his life, he was influential at researching and discovering various pieces of evidence that were to suggest that the modern day position of our continents, our large land masses, were not always where they are today. They had moved, they had drifted, and they had moved apart over a very long time scale. So parts of his evidence included fossil records of various plants and animals that lived around 250 million years ago, around the time that Alfred Wegener suggested that these continents were no longer separated by large distances and oceans, but they were connected. So the evidence includes various lizards like Mesosaurus or Listosaurus, or wildflower plants, and also a plant in South America and Africa called Glossopteris. Then he included the geology records through various mountain ranges in North America, Greenland, Scandinavia, the UK, and also in Western Africa, and also looked at glacial deposits through areas of Antarctica, South America, Africa, India and Australia. And all of these pieces of evidence suggested that during a time in geologic history, around 250 million years ago, these continents were connected. They were joined up together. So Alfred Wegener became famous for this theory of continental drift. So Alfred Wegener in 1912, and then again published in 1915, suggested that through the evidence presented, all the continents were in the past connected in this one large supercontinent called Pangaea. Now, Pangaea is Greek, that means all Earth. So this supercontinent, this large landmass, included the majority of all the current present day landmasses, but they were joined together and they were called different names as a collective landmass. And this landmass was centered kind of around the equator. So the Northern Hemisphere mass of land was called Laurasia, which is Laurentia, which is North America, plus Asia, Laurasia. So that included North America, Greenland, and Eurasia, the current Eurasia. Then we had the Southern Hemisphere section, which is all connected, called Gondwana or Gondwana land, which included Africa, South America, Australia as a landmass, Antarctica, and also the Indian subcontinent. So together, both of these landmasses, Laurasia and Gondwana, equaled Pangaea. And around Pangaea was one very large ocean called Panthalassa, and there was a small sea as a part of the larger ocean that was around Laurasia and Gondwana, where modern day the Middle East is, called the Tethys Sea. So Pangaea existed between 300 and 251 million years ago, and since then, those 50 million years of being connected of Laurasia and Gondwana together, there was a process or a mechanism called rifting, which is where the continents break apart over certain areas of the lithosphere, which is the crust, whether it's oceanic or continental, where it breaks apart and the continental drift would ensue and slowly move these large continental land masses away from this original Pangaea. And Alfred Wegener's evidence suggested that over the course of the last quarter of a billion years, these continents have drifted apart into their present day location. As you see from the four diagrams, looking at each period of the Mesozoic era into the Cenozoic era, starting with the Triassic, then into the Jurassic, and then finally the last period of the Mesozoic era, the Cretaceous, and then finally present day. What Alfred Wegener, Dr. Wegener, could not explain 
back in 1912 when he published his work and his evidence was how these large land masses actually drifted, how they actually moved. There were certain suggestions and ideas and theories, but nothing concrete, nothing with evidence to convince all of the scientists that were acknowledging the drift, acknowledging that Pangaea existed, to accept how these large land masses, these continents, were actually moving. This happened after World War II, once sonar was employed in the submarines during the war, and the sonar maps of the ocean floor were analyzed, and by the time it got to the 1960s and 1970s, the idea of sea floor spreading and a mid-ocean ridge where there's rifting and convection currents and literally dragging the lithospheric plate away from the rifting zone, causing a movement of the ocean floor, which is then connected to various continental plates and crust, and therefore providing the scientific evidence of how these large land masses actually drifted. So that happened about 33 years after the death of Alfred Wegener. He wasn't alive to see his theory proven through convection currents in the oceanosphere and seafloor spreading through various scientists like Hess and Vine and Matthews. And further evidence was presented for the movement and motion of the ocean floors around what's called divergent plate boundaries and rifting zones along the mid-ocean ridges was the age of the seafloor, the age of the basalt, the extrusive igneous rock that was formed from the lava cooling at the ridge, and also the paleomagnetism, the ability to analyze the rocks for any iron or nick or metallic elements that would indicate the direction of the magnetic fields at a certain time in history and how they reversed every 200,000 years or so. And that was indicated and shown as stripes on the ocean floor. Again, giving more evidence to suggest the ocean floors are moving and thus providing the mechanism that drives continental drift. In conclusion, Pangaea is the term or name given to the time in Earth's history when all of the Earth's land masses that are above sea level, the continents, were all connected in one supercontinent, a combination of Gondwana in the south and Laurasia in the north. And this lasted for about 50 million years between 300 and 251 million years ago. After that, Pangaea started to rift, break apart, and the small pieces of the continents that we now know as North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Oceania, Antarctica, and Africa all started to break apart and rift through certain areas of the lithospheric crust and slowly drift to their present day locations, which accounted for Wegener's theory on continental drift and the evidence he provided for the existence of Pangaea. And the combination of Connell Drift, Pangaea, and plate tectonics is one of the most revolutionary theories and understandings in science that's happened on a recent timescale. Started in the early 1900s and then completed around the 1970s with the final understanding of plate tectonics, subduction zones, rift valleys, mid ocean ridges, and orogeny zones like mountain ranges explaining how our planet's lithospheric surface is constantly in motion and under various types of deformation. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.